Okay. So we have our quorum. So let's get um, let's get started. This is the uh, monthly EDC meeting. Um, I'm calling it to order. Uh, it's from 7:30 to 9. We've shortened it. The normal starting time was 7 o'clock, but we postponed it for the revitalization meeting. Um, uh, we normally have an electronic policy where we put the agenda up and so forth on the screen, but this last meeting has superseded that, so we're just working from paper today. So I think, Sally, you have some copies of the agenda here, if anybody would like it. We'll read out the agenda. It's not very complicated. Um, you, you, yeah, some folks here need to talk. Thank you. Anybody else? You guys have? Yeah, the other one. Okay. Let's take one. Okay. Um, any additions or deletions to the agenda? No, nope, hearing none. Okay. Um, we're we're going to start with citizen comments. Um, at the last meeting, I was asked to do three things as it relates to citizen as it relates to the dis the meeting process. One was to identify the EDC members, so we have these uh, name tags, so we won't have to introduce ourselves. Second was to ask people to sp when they speak to say who you are. Um, and third is to only have people speak once until everyone has had a chance to speak once before someone speaks twice. So I have, will try to enforce both ask, reminding you to say your name and to try to get uh, you know, people to speak, you know, give everyone an opportunity to speak, Sally. And I will just ask everyone who's here to sign in again for this meeting. So there is a sign in sheet right circulating. If you I just circulated. Okay, is everybody signed in already for this meeting? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, are there any citizen comments? Um, i just like to ask for a clarification about citizen comments occurring only in this citizen comments portion of the meeting or do citizen comments occur when you're talking about specific agenda items? Right, so um, my style has been to do two things. One is to allow citizen comments throughout and second is to have our meetings always run over their time limit. And so I'm still working on how to reconcile those two things. Um, so I think I'm hoping that today's uh, there's one, I'm hoping that, that there aren't too many controversial items here, so what I'll do is if we save some time at the beginning, that, that would help, if there, you know, and that I'll certainly allow comments throughout, but I really do want to try to end the meeting at 9 o'clock. So I, for the moment, for today at least, I'm going to sort of do, use an ad hoc approach. I, I'm not going to prohibit comments right now, so if you'd like to hold your comment until it's more relevant to, to a particular item, you can do that. And Just on a, on a general basis, right. it's very difficult to make rational comments about something before you've heard right. the discussion. Right. So I would suggest that you adopt a policy that you make time for citizen comments during actual agenda items. Right. I, I agree with that if there's a chair who has discipline to shut people off even if they're making relevant comments. And I, this current chair doesn't. However, I could learn that skill, okay. and so I'm going to Thank work you. on that. Could you state your name, please? Yes, yeah, sorry. Thank Roger. you. Sorry. Roger. Roger. And, and Don, I would just remind people that the citizens' comments is also an opportunity for, we often have people that come in and have something that's not on the agenda. Right. Um, right. Instead of having them sit through the entire meeting, it's right. just nice to get it done at the beginning. Okay. We probably should say full, full name. Sure. I'm Beth Finlayson, and I just wanted to report two things that um, on the 15th of September, Charlie Shackleton was um, approached to create a pop-up naked table project um, that is going to be filmed by um, WGBH from Boston and that will show nationally um, and promote Woodstock and they're going to be here for the day filming the Naked Table Project and Woodstock's community. And so Sally and myself, and I know the inn's helping, and everybody's uh, a part of it. Do that on the bridge, is they yes, the and lunch will be served on the bridge at 2 p.m. There will be a tree planting in Phil's memory at 315. There'll be music all morning. Um, there'll be a big tent on the green where they will be making the tables directly on the green. 
and um, it should be a great event and I hope people um, all kinds of people will stop by and watch and and um, it, it should be great fun the second is it that mm -hmm. on October 4th uh, discover America I think it's discover America is coming to shoot a catalog shoot on um, our sidewalks for 2021 brochure so and I went to their website and looked and it's great so um, there we got them the permit for that or hopefully tomorrow night I'll get the permit or Tuesday night whenever we'll get the permit for that that's great that's sort of a trend we had another one at the end about two weeks ago or three weeks ago yeah that's great and we had one before for Lee Bryant on the what magazine was that back? I want to say, I, let me look so I say it correctly. All right, while you're looking, any other comments, including new topics that aren't aren't on the agenda? I have yes. a couple of questions. How does someone apply to receive funds from your committee? Well, um, that process may be changing, but basically, there's an application. There's currently there's an application on the website. You can get to the EDC website by going to the town website, and it says boards. Click on boards, and it says EDC. And there are criteria for community grants. There's a form to fill in. A shorter answer would be you can contact Sally Miller, who is the program manager and administrator, and she can help you through the process or talk you through it. Do you ask these individuals or corporations or LLCs, do you ask them for financials? We do. If you go to a bank, they want to see your financials. We do. I mean, well, they, for certain, we ask them for the financials of the project. And actually, Julia, do we ask them for financials for their overall organization in every case? No. Or? Not in every case. Not in every case. So in, in the cases in which it's pertinent. So yeah. if, if a company is asking for funds to support um, an existing program, we'll ask for the financials. So if somebody comes for you for $10,000, they want to do new carpet advertising and all that stuff. Does somebody go and check to see if actually physically is done, and do you actually check what they actually get billed for? Maybe it came in at eight thousand. You give them ten? Yeah, no, no, no. The, the process is we 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 pay after we don't. I mean, Sally, correct me if I'm wrong. They submit their invoices to us before they can get paid. So it's a reimbursement program. So we reimburse. Did you hear that? Okay. I just wanted to answer Julia's question. It's Destination America. That's cool. I have another question. Yeah. Flowers. Big subject, Joe. We use two outside, correct me if I'm wrong, we, we use two outside consultants on the flowers. The place in Randolph, the engineering company, and another company? No. No? Wasn't another company. Wasn't another. So Randolph? The wire came. They said, did they give it to you in writing or verbally? It's okay to put those flowers there? It's in, it's in the report, Joe. If you, walk, if you read the report, it's in there. Well, you know, they sell insurance, uh, errors and omissions. I would think if they're wrong, the state says they're wrong, if they said yes, you check with your legal counsel, go back and see if you can get some money from them. Yeah, it, it's not, I would say honestly, it's not, um, it's not as clear as that. Yeah. And we could discuss it offline, but it's not as clear as that. Joe has gone back to them several, three several times, times with discussions about it. And, um, you know, we, we can take this discussion offline. I'm not trying to shut it down, but okay. but if fundamentally, we'd be happy to talk about it offline. I think it would not be, it, it would not benefit the town. Uh, you know, to to I, I doubt that we would. I doubt. I'm almost certain that the cost that whatever we could get back, the cost of, of, of pursuing it would be much higher than. I doubt. We'll I doubt that. very much if we'd have an easy time or yeah. a a physically responsible time to prove neglect on their part. Yeah. And we discussed that. Yeah, and, 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 what, and what it was, how it was left Sorry. is uh, we, we both agreed that it was pretty much an error of omission of both sides. So, and we left it at that. With all the extra flowers, the flowers seem to stop at Tribune Park but you have business people that contribute to the 1% down there. And you have businesses in South Woodstock, the Inn and the, and the uh, General Store out there. Mm -hmm. You go by the rec center, you have more flowers than the Boston Flower Show. I would think some of them make a decision. 
you know, maybe give some, you know, Max contributes, the motel contributes, two gas stations contributes. I mean, just a thought, guys and girls. The gas station doesn't run, but, but the others do. The gas station do not. Yeah, they, they no, the, no, their coffee sales, oh, food yeah. sales, That's food sales, Amato's, yeah. Amato's yeah. and yeah. Emberlin's. Yeah. They do. Um, yeah, I think that the, uh, we went through an extensive process that actually was community-based. We invited, a, we had a public meeting and invited people just on the location of the pots. I do think that the people who showed up, just to take the South Woodstock example, I don't think anyone from South Woodstock came. So I think there was an inherent bias among the group that actually then replaced the pots to where they are now, towards not towards South Woodstock. I think that was, you know. And it wasn't because of South Woodstock. It was just, we, there were entities that said, yeah, we'll take them. We like, we'll, like the rest and we'll of them. Take care of them. And, and we'll take care of them. Care of them. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> they, they will maintain them. Yeah. And they'll keep them. And maybe even put them on next year. Now, if you feel that the rec center has too many, we can approach them, or you can approach them and say, hey, how about shooting a few down and start with stuff? If they'll take care of them, yeah, we can. Sure, they'll do that. It's almost done. Okay. All right. Um, any, any other comment? We're, we're out of time, and I, we will take comments throughout, time permitting. So, All right. Approval of the minutes from August 1st, 2019. Are there any, um, any comments or, or modifications to the minutes or any questions? If not, could I have a motion to approve them? So, Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Minutes were approved. Joe and Courtney. So. Uh, summary of the revitalization discussion. Um, there were only uh, the, the sort of half of us were here, two thirds of us were here. I think most of the people in the room were here, but basically, uh, the best way to summarize it is to look at those five things. Um, those were the five top ideas. Um, those ideas were all Dubois, came from the Dubois and King report, except for number 27, 26 and 27. But there are also a number of ideas that were generated by the community. Anything above number 27, is a, it was generated by the meeting. So Courtney and Julie, you weren't here. Uh, fix the sidewalks, path to White Cottage Farmers Market. Snow cleaning. Snow on the side. cleaning on the sidewalks, requiring local residents to maintain a certain level of fit and finish. Get it for the I, I noticed that one. Yeah. Um, and so there's sort of a group of five that came up on top, and then another group, which is that top row to the left there, Stuart, is that right? Those four over there. Yes. Those the bigger. Uh, th that are the sort of the next tier. Um, there's and actually one that was 17 votes. Like okay, which is further enhance East End Park. Okay, so there's sort of five in the first tier, five in the second tier, and then all the rest, it drops off, then uh, all the rest are pretty, are pretty low. Um, and so uh, the, you know, we're now, we're about to talk about how we can form up different working groups according to the four priorities, and hopefully the <coughs> group of us that decide to spend time on physical amenities will, will take these into account. We'll, we can't develop 29 plan, rigorous plans, uh, but we can probably develop five between now and, say, December, and, and then further develop them throughout the year. So this was the idea was for this was to set our 2020 program in one of our four priority areas, physical amenities. And this process is going to help us to do that. So anyone else, since many of you were here, any other summary of the revitalization meeting? I think it was great. Yeah, we had about, I don't know, about 40 people maybe or something. Yeah, that's yeah. what I just thought you should tell them that yeah. the room was full, more than full. Yeah. Any, anything else? No? Okay. Good. Um, grant updates. Uh, there are four grant updates on the agenda. Woodstock Nursery, TV Marketing, I want them to upcoming grant reports and community grant schedules. So those are just discussions of the grant process. And Sally, you'll, you'll lead those too, I think. Uh, Woodstock Nursery School, I just wanted to report back. That was a grant that we received, a grant request that we received three months ago or in the regular cycle. Um, we met with them, Julia met with them, and then I met with them for really the same purpose. I think you may have met with them twice. <laughs> So, and, and all for the same purpose, which was to try to communicate that what we were looking for from them was an assessment of how, of how the grant would help them to expand capacity. And what seemed to be the purpose of the grant was to improve the quality of the program and that it would not expand the capacity. Or at least they, they didn't think it would and they, they didn't think it would. And they certainly couldn't say that it would. So, I, 
I want to I, I wanted to update you all on this because I want to make sure that what I did was consistent with what I think we're supposed to be doing as a group but if not we can go back to them I, I said that that in our other cases in fact even in child care specifically that what we were trying to grant money funds for was to expand capacity for growth and that while improving quality was good if if they were improving the quality without the ability to handle more people and there's a shortage of child care anyway we didn't think they were going to have any problem you know i think this money was going to be used in part to fund a music program and, but i mean they're, they're full up anyway and so the the health and music program or not, but we're not expanding capacity. So I encourage them and talk to them and brainstorm with them about how they might frame their proposal to increase capacity. And we sort of agreed that they would work on it, and, and, but I haven't heard back from them and I haven't reached out to them either. I'm guessing based on what they told me, and I think perhaps what they told you, Julia, that it was going to be difficult for them to increase capacity because that's not what their funds were really <coughs> intended for. So at this point, the proposal is um, not been approved and it's just sort of it, it, you know I think we can close it out Sally although we could reopen it the moment they they can come up with a, a an idea I really just sort of wanted to check with the group is that I think that's consistent with our philosophy but is, it, does anyone disagree with that no and I would add only that um, I, I think that expanding capacity in a future is not something that they would be opposed to but it is not no. something that they can commit to right. hence the gray area and um, and to speak to your point, uh, as far as asking for financials, their financials looked healthy enough to support, um, if not a drastic improvement in their services, some improvement. So without, we, our grant. without our grant. Right. Yeah, no, I encourage them to, in the future, come to us yeah. and said that we would look very favorably and we already have granted a child care organization funds to expand their capacity. We would, I'm sure, do the same with them if they propose that. So, so you are going to turn down the grant and, and if any they have something in the future is different, they become a the whole new grant. Yeah, I mean, I think that really no action is required. I don't know, maybe Sally, no, technically we have to, you know, we're not, we're failing to recommend it, so I think we have to do, we don't have yeah, to do I anything. Yeah, I mean, if, I think we should make a decision to close it out. I okay. think that just would be easier. And if All right, do we need to have a motion to do that? We probably should. Okay, maybe could I have a, is there, any, is there any other discussion? All right, could I have a motion then to decline the grant for now? Temporarily decline it. Well, it, it decline it uh, with the hope that they would submit a future yeah, grant right. around yeah. around uh, so, so closing this particular grant. Right. I motion to close this particular grant. Is there a second? Seconded. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Okay. Uh, TV marketing. Um, th th it's not our traditional process to ask grantees to uh, give us interim updates. However this is a kind of a critical time in this project it's a unique project and enough time has passed so that some work has been done so i just asked nick if he would come and give us a five minute update now i will say in advance that nick wanted to share some of the videos <coughs> and i can't technically get it to play on the projector but i will will if you'd like we'll make that available and show that at the next edc meeting because i've looked at you can look at them online and we'll share the url they're good we have so go ahead. four of them are completed so go ahead, just take a couple minutes. <clears throat> okay, so um, 25 commercials will be shot. Seven are done already, but of the seven, only four are edited. He takes them back in, you know, in the end. Four, what, the there was 25 total to yeah. be shot. Seven he completely, he, he completed as far as shooting them. Mm -hmm. But there's uh, only four of those are edited where he took them back and finalized them, which those are the four that are on. <coughs> that I have here on uh, my iPad, or you had. You saw them, I guess. Yeah, I yeah. saw three of the four. <coughs> What'd you think? I thought they were good. There was, uh, we should say, farmhouse pottery, mm -hmm. Gillian, unicorn, and I can't remember the four. Ardmore? Ardmore? And the Ardmore. Ardmore, yeah, I didn't see the Ardmore. Yeah, I saw them. So, uh, Andrew was with me today, he said, and by the way, he shot ours today, so that's another one I didn't mention. He finished my, my hit. Uh, nine will be shot next week, and then the balance the third week of September, and that'll be it. And then he goes, he has to audit them and edit them and get them per perfected. But he said he'll be ready for October 1st to air them. Okay. And uh, as far as the budget is concerned, um, $18,000 is going towards um, Comcast airing. Five, they went to 500 a month from 400 a month. And there's forty thousand streaming. Five hundred. 
showings a month? 500 will show 30 second commercials in each month. So it's a total of 1,500. Um, and the reason it went up to 18,000 is that we were able to, with a lot of negotiation with Comcast, to uh, get them to do the entire um, Burlington area, all the way up Burlington, Middlebury, that whole area, which was a lot more money. I didn't know that they priced them out differently, different areas. Uh, but she was able to compromise, and we do have that area also. So um, that came out to 18,000. Um, total production that EDC will have to pay for is 4,300. Uh, that brings us up to 22, uh, 22,000. And there'll be, there's other expenses for mailing and administrative costs that we don't really have figured out yet, but that leaves us a balance of 2,600 uh, to, to pay for those. So we are definitely under budget. It will not go over 25,000. If anything, it'll be a little bit under 25,000. Um, and Amy, of course, is handling all of the Comcast uh, airing of shows. Yeah. I would like to ask that if we don't have to. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I just would like to request that um, the marketing, uh, the editorial board, the marketing committee, that we set up a meeting between now and October 1st, sooner rather than later, if time permitting, and it can be a short meeting, to talk about how we're going to measure the the metrics of the of the ad campaign so that when December comes around we in an integrated way we you you can compare it to what you're doing now and what we would expect and so forth um, Susie Stultz has proposed a, a you know a comprehensive approach to how one would do that and she's spoken to Comcast and Comcast can deliver the kind of conceptually the kind of metrics that that we want and, and they can apparently do it very easily so it's really sort of a matter of it's not going to be it's sort of a matter of picking what we want from a, a pretty, what sounds like a pretty rich opportunity. So we don't have to discuss it further, but maybe offline we can just, it would be great if, if by the end of, if by the time we launch, we knew what we were measuring. Because if you remember, that was the sort of the point of this test. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry, are there, are there other comments or questions, John? Yeah, the only thing I'm, I'm, I'm curious about, Nick, is that when everything is said and done, it's all done, will you come to us and say, well, this is what we spent <coughs> This is how we spent the money, where certain monies went. So we have invoices that we're going to. Oh yeah, I'm sure. We just like to see it. That's all. It's just some kind of. A, we're going to try to set this up with just about everybody that we grant yeah, money yeah. to. There. There's some kind of accountability after it's done. What'd you do with the money? That's all. Nothing big. Nothing serious. Just. Well, what we're doing is um, um, Andrew Westview Video is billing. The bills go go to the EDC. Good. And then Comcast, the bills go to the EDC. I mean, they come to me as a copy, and then they go to. I haven't seen them yet. So no, we haven't gotten them yet. We haven't okay. done so anything. We haven't done any yet. Okay. <laughs> but when the, when we get them, well, you'll have them all, and she'll yep. have an accounting of yep. every single thing. I think I think we're just we're curious about how successful these things turn out to be, and if they are or not, you know. What well, you have to know that till January. Yeah. You know it really. Knows. I think that's what that's what the marketing committee will sit down and we'll yeah. figure out. Yeah. Yeah. Or not marketing. The, the, the I, I'm not so much talking about the the metrics of what. How many people come in as a result of that? But just like, where did the money go? That's all. Okay. Well, well, I think the, that, that's um, part of the yeah. election yeah. for. Isn't there a participation mm -hmm. to see? Yeah. We we well we know for sure that eighteen thousand is going to Comcast. Okay. And we know for sure forty three hundred is going. Well, to we're going to do that now. Okay. Okay. Done, so you can, you can I'm just saying we have like yeah, ninety percent of it. It sounds okay. like you have you but, have that. Yeah. But, but Joe, that's that's part of the normal process of um, submitting invoices is that they have to they have to account for where the funds. Well, Sally can basically is. answer yeah. that question actually yeah. for every so, for every grant. Yeah. Mm. So I, I I see all of those and I, I will ask if it's you know the revitalization group I will ask one of you to look at it if I don't know personally where it where the money has you know been spent. Okay, I'm and, just curious. That and by the way, of the 25 people, <coughs> 20. Three of them have paid already. Okay. Their, their share, of 175 each. We didn't shoot anybody who didn't. People <laughs> wanted to join, but they didn't. We, we kept after them, and we didn't get their checks, so they didn't get shot. Okay. Could you, excuse me. Could you explain that 25 people paid for that commercial? Is that what you're saying? They paid. It's a 350 dollars per commercial. They paid half. How much? 175, and EDC pays half. 175. Of that 31 people you committee voted on last year to approve that, how many 
whether they're store owners, LLCs, corporations, how many pay pay the one percent tax? Of uh, which of the thirty? Sorry, you, you you voted a hundred percent to approve that the last meeting. If I saw the saw it on oh, TV, yeah, right? Yeah. How many of those thirty one individuals or corporations pay into that one the one percent tax? I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly, it might have been about a third. How many? A third, maybe a quarter. Not everyone, not a majority, but also not not an insignificant number. That would be an interesting figure to look at. I think well, what, we're, what we're most interested in, in finding out, is whether or not this expenditure on advertising <coughs> is more effective at bringing people to Woodstock than the money we spend on the website or on social media and so forth. If it, it that's really what it was. And so, you know, it, that, that was what, we, we would deem this a success if we saw a pickup in retail sales and visitors to the town and we would deem it a failure if we saw no move at all and, and we have some sense of how we can measure that that's why this is just a three-month program so that we can you know in at the end of December or early January I mean we're being realistic it'll be a few weeks in January where we'll analyze the data and try to see if we can see any movement so after saying that you had two individuals here male and female that seemed to be very adamant it wasn't the way to go and I don't know what their background is but if I were you, I would have tabled it until I got more information, to be honest with you. Well, and actually, those two individuals, male and female, uh, <laughs> we, we've met with both of them. And uh, one of them, uh, the female, <laughs> uh, Susie. You, uh, you, you know, you got to balance it out, male, female, female, male. You know? Okay, well, Susie, basic, Susie Stultz is a marketing expert and, can, and has proposed to the EDC a framework for evaluating this test. And, in fact, that's what I was referring to when I asked the members of the marketing committee to meet with and I just asked her before she left to, to let's try to schedule a meeting and to to use those metrics to try to evaluate the test so I think we're planning to do that right? are you going to do that for, for a complimentary or are you going to have to give us money no 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 no, compliment, no. Susie has already given us the framework she's vol she's a community member she's spent I think a fair bit of time uh, putting it like together like to follow the money yeah no there's no I, she had some pizza I think, Joe, I think the goal is for the whole community to benefit all of Woodstock, all of the commercial district, all of the residents, to, to benefit from this type of venture. So, I mean, to go into nitpick who contributed what or where, I think defeats the whole purpose. All right, any other, anything else, any other questions about TV marketing? <coughs> okay, good, I mean, we're on track. Let's, we're, our fingers are crossed about, the, you know, the impact. And we really do need to get that measurement discussion. I yep. know you guys are really busy, but. Susie's given us a good start. Okay. Sorry, I'm talking with my mouth full. Okay. Sally, I'm not sure what, the, could you well, talk the about the next one? The next one was just, um, you had mentioned that you wanted to have some more reporting out of grants, oh. and that's what that next item is. Got it, okay. So, um, yeah, the, the last meeting we had our, f we had the, we had the first um, update from a grantee in person at Pentangle. Um, we have had two updates in writing, one from the Optimist Center, in which they reported that they spent, one from the Optimist Center and one from Bookstock. Uh, both of those, uh, I've been through both of those reports and talked to both organizations, and I feel that an in-person review of both of those would yield some interesting information that would not really fully been conveyed accurately in the written reports. Um, in one case there was an error and in another case there was an omission and I think both were important so I'm just gonna I think the only thing to say is I'm going to encourage us to continue to schedule uh, grant f post whatever we call it post grant feedback um, and uh, a couple of other suggestions that were made were park run which I think has been very successful and has got some really interesting stories uh, and another question is um, uh, F has an F in it with child care. The Rainbow School, no F. The Rainbow School, which, w sorry. Rainbow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a bad speller. Um, uh, which I think we thought, Sally, might be premature, but Julia had mentioned that she thought it wasn't premature, that in fact we, they've now opened and we yeah. could. I mean, yeah, I think now so. it would have been premature this month, but by next month. Oh, so okay, I misunderstood. So I've also spoken to the Optimist Center. The Optimist Center is, I think, a fairly controversial uh, what was a controversial grant. It was before my time. I've talked to um, Sebastian 
Miter, who is, if you haven't met Sebastian, you need to meet him. He's an incredible addition to the community. And he is really thinking through what co-working and remote working is all about. So I think even though we got a written report from them, and even though we got a written report from Woodstock, I'm going to, because I know you had mentioned that we get some of those, I wouldn't encourage them to come back. So um, unless there's any objections, I don't think we need to vote. I'll just pursue that process. Great. OK. Um, and the community grant schedule, that's. So that the reason why I'm asking about that is we actually have posted on the EDC website right. um, the next grant cycle is at the end of September. Right. So there well, needs to be a decision about whether we want to. And I have had, not recently, but maybe a month and a half ago, I had a couple people inquire right. about it. So. so can I just suggest that we that we take that up when we talk about um, the, uh, e the, the uh, Oh, the EDC committee staff. Sorry, that's a deadline for submission. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And, and what well, the website also says that the grants are, the grant process is currently on hold, right. and it will announce a new schedule by the middle of September. Right. So, so this is it. So this is the time where we have to decide, and I think it really depends on our on our working group status, the, the discussion that we're going to have in a few minutes under all this about how we organize ourselves and how we move forward. Okay. Any other comments about this last point? Okay, um, Sally, uh, coordinator's report on state of state update and visioning. Yes, um, I just wanted to update you on the state of state. We had um, six people who signed up for them. One actually canceled, so we have five individuals that are coming with their um, families uh, next weekend. And um, we have arranged to have a social on Friday evening at 506 on the river and uh, Monday morning coffee at the Woodstock Inn. They, the um, participants will be um, sort of the Woodstock Area Mountain Bike Club is actually um, sponsoring this weekend with us. And so the, it's been um, advertised as a mountain biking weekend. Right. So the people here are going to be focused on that. So on, on Saturday and Sunday, um, Wamba has put together some activities for them as well. And we are, um, when people sign up for this program, they actually say where they're interested. So we had said that we had some employers in certain areas that would potentially be hiring and so we now have to sort of match up all these folks with some folks out there as well so that's something that we'll be doing now that we know who's coming um, but it should be a good weekend tomorrow's day, closing date yep. um, yeah it yeah. should should be and we encourage you all to to join us at 506 because we yes. do want a representation of the community <coughs> and for them to meet right community um, members although we are going to ask for RSVPs for Friday evening and Monday morning just so we know how many people are coming so I will send a note about that directly or you can let me know if you're interested in coming um, the, the one the one requirement and it's actually interesting because most of the folks said they would like to see our co-working space so um, we will we actually have two in town right now so um, they will be able to tour the Optimus Center or the schoolhouse out in West Woodstock so. mm -hmm. I'd just like to make a really quick comment about that, which is slightly off, not, not off topic entirely, but that I think that as we discuss things like the Optimus Center and um, the website, and I think that um, a bit of reframing might be in order, as to me, uh, a co-working space and a website are not about a benefit, they're about a cost to the town of not having them in the current economy, and the way that young families and people with jobs that they may be bringing to town operate, not having a social media presence, not having a good website, not having a good co-working space, these are not options. It's, it, it's not about do these things, improve the community. It's about what would it be, it, it, we, we have to have those things. So as, as we talk about TV versus web, it's not an apples to apples, like it's not, it's not exactly you know, it's only it's only it, it only needs to be thought of at the same time because it takes dollars to Absolutely. do both. Absolutely, no, That's and, the only and, and and both need to be quantified, right, right. to the right. greatest extent possible. Okay. I'm I'm only making the point that that exactly what you're saying. People coming to town, right. look interested in moving here, mm -hmm. are going to be asking about the co-working space. Mm -hmm. Therefore, was, it was a requirement. It was a requirement, yeah. requirement of, For, of being in the program. So I think as we discuss, as the, all of these, as accountability becomes more of an issue, as we look at, as we invite grantees in to have conversations, as we are considering this, I think it would behoove us as a board and the community at large to think about it more in terms of the cost of not having it rather than the benefit of having it. That's a well distinction. Said. Mm -hmm. Well said. Okay, good. 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And so the other item I would just like to point out um, is our community visioning. I mentioned it at the um, revitalization, <coughs> but we will be having a community picnic next Monday evening um, at five o'clock at Billings Farm <coughs> Museum. And I, I'd like to point out the photos from some previous ones. So we'll be doing a community photo at six o'clock. Um, the firemen will be cooking chicken. Food will be available at a very nominal cost. And um, my kids grew up doing those picnics every year, and it was like one of their favorite days, probably second after Christmas. They just loved it. So kids, hopefully we'll get families and anybody, it's open to everybody. So come and join us. But um, also, I would just remind people that this came out of the visioning committee from the steering committee because they wanted to have an event where they could post the draft vision, so that will be part of the evening we will have. Um, posters made up that have some of the comments and it will be an opportunity for people to put their own comments and we'll be taking it to the next step. I posted the draft vision to the EDC um, meeting drop box. We, we will have an updated one. We had a meeting today. So it's moving along and it, it looks really good. I mean, they've put a lot of effort into it. So I think it's going to be a valuable um, document process for the EDC as well. So you miss. I know you made the suggestion. I think you missed when we put up the slide. Right, but I but, the, it, yeah. but the but uh, I knew you were going to be late. But the I think the group appreciated seeing how it, how the two yeah, things fit good. together. Can you just briefly update us and tell us how many people? Well, one of the reasons we funded the visioning study was because, and this particular consultant was because of the the expertise that they had and the focus that they had and you had on reaching out to entire, as much of the community as possible, rather than the right. same cast of characters, right. some of whom are sitting in the room tonight, because you know, they come to a lot of meetings. Right. Can you tell us how many people yeah. in touch? So we, um, they had over 600 surveys filled out. So that, and we don't know, I mean, again, I don't have how it was broken down, who right. actually filled them out. And we had comment cards and public meetings, and we received over 3,000 comments. So that's, and again. But you also have an email list of how many people? We have people? an email list of about 500. Yeah. So there's 500 people who signed up to say, I'd like to stay involved and know what's going on. So yeah. they will also, they're getting regular updates. So if anybody here would like to have be on that list and you're not, let me know. So, okay. yeah. So we feel like it was a pretty good representation. Yeah. It, was, it was a very broad, we, we sorted through those 3,000 comments as a steering committee. And there were some themes and there were a few outliers. So it was very good. Okay. Is there a, a target date, Sal, like, you know, this, uh, this we'll know by this time Hopefully what are the conclusions of yeah. all this visioning? So the visioning is that the draft vision is a, is, a, is a document, but then the next steps are when we hope to get more public input. So we're hoping that in October, um, early October, there will be another meeting. I don't know how that's going to be structured, whether it will be a physical meeting, will it be small meetings, we don't have that yet, but there'll be a next step to look at all of this and then focus on projects potentially or prioritize projects. I think that would be important. We're about to discuss the schedule yep. and this concept of a 2020 yep. plan. That sort of just barely fits into the sequencing so that we could take those things into account when we set our 2020 plans. And I, and I think there'll and be not enough. A, it's not a coincidence. Right, and I think there'll be enough. And that was actually yeah. part of pushing the schedule the way we did is to be able to give that feedback to the EDC and to the um, select board and trustees as well. Okay. Any other, nope, any other comments about visioning? Okay. Um, election of vice chair. Um, so my at the last meeting, I asked that we postpone this in order to seek um, in order to seek interest. My view is that someone you know needs to be interested in being the vice chair in order to be a vi good vice chair. And w one of you, Joe, raised his hand. Um, I'm not quite sure. I I said sure. That's right. <laughs> raised his email hand. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know. I suppose I need to ask him, and you all got the email asking if you were interested in doing it. Is anyone, is anyone else interested in being the vice chair? Speak now or forever hold you, please. I think we probably should document at some point, and I wouldn't do it now. I would try to do it offline. What the, what it is that the vice chair does? Other, you know, if, if anything other than um, maintaining, staying apprised of communications and issues that, I mean, there are some things that I sort of see, I think you should see, that, you know, if you're the, the vice chair should see them, and then uh, 
presiding when the chairman is or representing the EDC when the chair can't. Um, is, there any, is there any other discussion? Can I say something? The reason I, got, uh, I said sure, because I'm excited now about the direction <coughs> that the EDC has taken. I think it's taking a great direction as opposed to what has been the road that we have been going down in the past. And um, I'm really excited about that. And I think it's going to really benefit the community to a great extent. And um, that's why I said sure. Okay. That was it. Are there any other comments? It's like Vice President, you do nothing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he, gets so he, gets he gets the keys to the plane, yeah. to the yeah. corporate chat. Yeah. I, I, he should provide the pizza. <laughs> uh, any other comments? Okay, I think we should have a motion. Will someone make a motion to to nominate Joe as vice chair? Courtney, any? Is there a second? Michael, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, EDC administrative funding requests. We have to. Well. We are about to talk about how we organize ourselves, and uh, and that will, um, to some extent, define the this this staff support that we need, whether it's administrative or what I'm going to call program management. Um, these projects, some of them don't need much program management; others probably need significant program management. Um, I, I, so I, I envision. I'm jumping ahead a little bit. I envision that when we put together our plans for 2020, we will have, we will ask each plan, project, let's say, you know, converting the information booth on the green into something beautiful, if that's one of the things we decide to do, we'll have both a financial request, we think that's going to cost $18,000, and a request for program management support. And we need two hours a month, or we need four hours in month one and two, and then nothing after that. Or we need nothing, because the volunteers can handle it. Um, and volunteers being on the EDC or in the community. Um, until we, and then we would have an administrative, so we would have a program manager. We've discussed this before. We'd have a program manager and we'd have an administrator. And the administrator would deal with basically minutes and posting of warning, warning meetings and handling um, invoices and so forth, the financial aspects of it. Until then, we have to keep operating. And so I've checked with several of the select board members. Jill, I didn't get a chance to speak to you, but I spoke to Butch and Ray this morning, it's because I happened to be meeting with them, and, and asked if it was all right if we did the following. And again, doing this out of sequence, I'm proposing that we, we vote on this, that we, that we request the select board approve $35,000 for fiscal 2020, July 1, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. $35,000 for our staff support, which would be $25,000 for what we currently call the coordinator and $10,000 for administrative costs, which would include an administrator. Now, currently, we don't have the administrator, and Sally is doing both, but I think we believe that this funding will cover bo both, if, if, assuming we can get an administrator sooner rather than later. Um, this may change on January 1st because depending on <coughs> what the demand is for program management, I don't think we know that, but I, and so Sally has sort of suggested that we request this funds for the full year. Um, this, the two members of the select board that I spoke with asked that the amount that we request <coughs> this year be lower than the amount last year, which was our intention anyway, and we've worked with Sally and, you know, we figured out a way to, to do that, because that, that, Sally has some other time commitments that are significant and and um, it's fair to her as well. I mean, I hope I'm speaking. So, um, so therefore, this will represent a meaning, you know, a, a decent size reduction in annual spending for support, and it gives us the flexibility to adopt our split positions as soon as we can adopt them, which may, may not be for another, f may not be, may work in conjunction with our 2020 plan. So maybe it will. I don't think it'll happen before January, but it could happen then. So, any, any discussion about this before we vote on it? The, uh, uh, it, 
Is there like a job description between both of them? There is currently a job description which we are working off of, and it has served us reasonably well till till now. There will be new job descriptions based on the split role. Okay. Um, but right now, as a practical matter, I mean, tomorrow morning, it's still Sally, and she's still working off of the job description that we have that was approved. Sure. I know we so identified in our last discussion all these the specific items that yeah. uh, we want to get off your plate. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the purpose that of the administrative yeah. job description. So we, we yeah. We, there hasn't, as a practical matter, there hasn't really been any way to hire anyone given right. the goings on in town hall. So now that yeah. maybe, maybe there's some breathing room, we can now start to work on this. But this will, this will, you know, this is official. We have job descriptions. We have a person who's qualified in the role. She's been playing them all effectively. Yeah, you know, there's yeah. nothing, nothing wrong with any of this. It's just that we're, we're taking small steps towards our eventual objective. I guess. And okay. John, the only other thing that I would say is that when I suggested that you put in ten thousand dollars for administrative expenses, that that would cover. Um, somebody to do the actual administrative, but also some expenses for the EDC for other expenses like if reimbursement for pizza at parties and then we requested some funds for stay to stay. So small dollar amounts that might be $200 or less that we don't have to go to the EDC and ask. Like you know, petty cash. Now. It's almost like petty cash. Well, yeah. So I, that would I be apologize. I assumed we already had that and you were just we, asking for it again. Well, it's a new thing. It, it, it wasn't really defined quite as well okay. and it wasn't um, it wasn't funded in the last fiscal year. It was just money that was left over from previous I see. years. So now we're sort of specifically yeah. earmarking it for those two things, yeah. the administrator yeah. when we have them, and small administrative right. expenses. Right. Okay. Roger had a question. Sorry, Roger. So can I ask, is this the entirety of the administrative budget for the EDC? These, this, so where does the, the website content coordinator and website maintenance come from? That, that's in the marketing. That's what we would call marketing. So okay. I would, I would argue that that's iffy accounting practices when you have an ongoing expense that you intend to continue funding every year um, and you're, you're accounting for it as if it were a project that's developing differently than, than just paying that person essentially going forward. Um, and I also just related to that, um, you're asking for very specific and comprehensive metrics for this television advertising as obviously I believe you should. Um, I have not seen a similar kind of accounting going on at least publicly um, or at least widely disseminated in such a way that I know about it, about what kind of results you're getting off your digital marketing. Okay, so the, the, the let me, let, let's deal with that question offline. The good news is, is that there is significant data on the digital marketing, and it's actually, to be honest, I think it's been squeezed out of the monthly agenda because we've been spending so much time talking about how to organize ourselves prior to four months ago or three months ago at every meeting we had an update with statistics and it's part of the it's part of the it's on so that data is on the website um so it's an easy question we do have those metrics on the digital side okay we have, is metrics, that a fair? For, we have metrics for, for page views um openings of the email uh, uh newsletter we don't have metrics connecting that to visitors right. to but what we, to visitors to visitors we have, but we have all of that, all of the standard Google metrics analytics. for how effectively a website is communicating with an audience. Okay, I, I'd really like to see uh, that. I can totally. That. I can okay, that. yeah, thanks. Right. And, and, and let's make sure that the way we make it available to Rogers by putting it on the website. Yeah. It's, it, well, it is I think it is on the website. Well, it's in the EDC, and we're going to figure this out too. It's in the EDC meeting Dropbox right now. So okay. it's, but that's not, right now, not public, right. the one I'm using. so. Okay, fine. So yeah, just no, there's no, uh, there's no paid marketing driving uh, traffic to the website organic, currently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I understand that. And Roger, your point about accounting is understood. I, let me just say that I think we should publish our data so that we can record both the recurring nature of the expense and the priority to which it's being allocated. And I think. By breaking it out, and we can break it out. We can do. We can achieve what you're describing while still basically saying, "Are we spending it on marketing or administration?" You, you see, see what I mean? It's no, it, absolutely. Yeah, it's so. just if you're if you've decided uh, you're going to incur an ongoing expense uh, every year, I understand. That's then that should be accounted for as an ongoing expense. I agree. I agree completely. I think we can we we can work on that. 
Okay, uh, any other comments about the this proposal to fund? The, so then we would then take this to the select board and uh, ask them for this funding for the fiscal year. We've already, we have already have two months of this funding. This really extends it to the full year. Right, and you haven't voted on it yet. No, that's right. I'm just saying, is there any other discussion? I'm no, sorry, no, the, only, the only thing we're really waiting on is uh, hiring an administrator. We're not it's waiting. Such a, right? Well, we're or trying to find that person. Uh, well, and, and then. Wasn't there some time some shares? Yeah, it, it, well, it's just, I mean, they're not, right now, they're not in a position it's to, right. to do that. Yeah, it, it's Ooh, I'm sorry, Courtney. The, the town hall. The shared. Oh, so. yeah. we're, we're trying to find someone in the town. We're trying to find a shared yeah, role. Yeah, yeah. It's, there's not a... But I'm, so, but just my question is, that, that's where we're at right now. I'm just going to find the administrator. Correct. Okay. All right. Could I have a motion, then, to request these funds from the select board? I'll make a motion. Mika? Is there a second? I'll second. Joe? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, passes. Okay, um, old business, EDC uh, working group status. Uh, okay, we, it's 8.20, we will adjourn at 9. Um, we only need a couple of minutes for new business unless there's other new business. Is there other, is there other new business? Okay, uh, I'm just trying to... Well, I mean, you have... Yeah, yeah no, I'm just uh, besides the two new new business. Okay. Um, I normally would have presented a, a, a PowerPoint, uh, but I, uh, to be honest, I just didn't have time in terms of because I was Joe and I were preparing for this uh, this other meeting. So I'm going to do my best to replay a discussion that four of us happened to have. Well, it wasn't random yesterday, which was Mika, Julia, Larry, and I. I think what we did, I'll let you comment, is to take the basic principles that we've been discussing all along. Remember Plan A and Plan B. You know we've agreed on the notion that we have four priorities that we want to organize ourselves around those priorities. We've talked about different frequencies of meetings, and I think what we did was try to put a little bit more detail on that, those ideas, without changing the fundamental ideas. And so what I'd like to do is to present where I think we came, what we, I think we came to yesterday, and I'll, I'm going to take a flip chart and just draw it because I don't have the PowerPoint. It'll be easier to do it that way. Okay. And then there's a few open questions that we had some points of view about, but we were just half of the committee, four-ninths actually, technically, and a few that we couldn't agree on. Um, and that, so that's sort of an open question. There's sort of two or three questions I think we need to answer. So I'm just going to go pull that up and bring it over here. Thank you. Thanks, Roger. I think I, think I may need that okay. thing, too. Do you mind? No. Um, that thing is called an easel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if I do it here, what's it? Um, uh, Julie, do you want to sit where I'm sitting? Why don't you sit where I'm sitting, and then I'll check with Julie. Let me just move that. I'm trying to get it so maybe you can. Let's wait. I have to shift over a little bit. We, we need to get a real good angle. Okay. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. Okay. 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 Baby steps. <laughs> okay. So what we what we talked about was was dividing our instead of in, in the past we've talked about community projects and EDC projects. The distinction being where did the idea come from and who is managing the project. Going forward, we don't think that we, we can imagine projects where it's hard to distinguish whether it's a community project or an EDC project because we're working in close partnership. And frankly, I think the marketing committee is a good example of that. It's more people that are from the community than from the EDC that are on that committee. So instead, what we said was important was that the, whether or not the project was in one of our four priority areas or not was important, and whether or not the project was big or small by, by dollar amount. And the dollar amount we thought was between five and $10,000, and we didn't agree on which it was. So just imagine that it's 7500 for the moment. And so we would say that there are four types of projects, and I'll move out of the way in a second. One is priority, and one is non-priority, and big and small. And so we said that there are four types of projects. And the first thing that we said was that we don't want to have any of these. So let's say that this line is seven, I'm going to write seven, five to ten, okay. So if we decided it was 10K, we would basically say, look, we're not going to give grants of more than $10,000, no matter what. <laughs> That's not in 
either marketing Woodstock, expanding housing capacity, improving physical amenities, or supporting the business environment. There's just no reason to. Mm -hmm. So we end up with three uh, of these types of projects. And we then talked about a different process for this, which are big projects in our priority areas, versus really these. So this process here, we thought should be one time per year. This is the process, for those of you that were at the, the meeting at 6 o'clock, was the process that I was sort of talking about. Every year, let's say starting in September, we create some working groups. And I'm, I'm going to, by the way, talk about what we were calling subcommittees. And I'm going to talk about them in a little bit less of a rigid form. Because I think that we would benefit in a number of ways from these groups being a little bit more dynamic with perhaps people coming in and out of them depending on what they were doing and how much workload there was. Also, people coming in and out of them depending on their time availability. So, for example, we've had a discussion among some of us about whether, young, whether we have trouble attracting younger people to the board because if we go to a subcommittee structure, we're now going to have 24 meetings a year that you have to go to. And that may mean that only people like me who don't do anything have time to come to these meetings. And that's really not a good thing. Um, especially if you think about what economic development in Woodstock is, which is importantly about attracting younger people to come to town. And it's not likely that a group of old people is going to be as effective at doing that as a mixed group. So uh, I think the idea here was to, I'm going to call them working groups, which is a group of people that are working on a project or a set of projects. And one time per year we would set that plan. So imagine, for example, the physical amenities working group does just what we talked about at 6 o'clock from 6 to 7.30. They start in September, they come up with ideas, they get some input from the community, however they do it. They start working on those ideas, they pick the top ones, they come back through October, November, and then in December, we have a, a kind of our equivalent of a town meeting, and the physical amenities group says we've got four projects, and we've, we don't have the final project plans for these four projects. Some of those might come in March, some might come in June, We've got more work to do, but we've scoped it out enough. We don't have competitive bids, but we do know that the, we've talked to experts. We do know the cost is between 40 and 50, or between four and five. And we do know that it's legal. We still have to check some of the regulations, but we basically know it's legal. And you know, so here's our plan. We'd like to propose these four projects and physical amenities for 2020. And that's it, it's one time, and they're bigger projects. And we then do that for all of those four working groups and we allocate our money. Maybe we give physical amenities what they ask for, maybe we can't. And then that's the plan for this. And hopefully that's the bulk of our money. Now if you think about the state of our work today, the marketing group should be able to do that already. It needs to add in what we learn about TV. Maybe it needs to add in other things, but it's, it's, it, it certainly is, has a, a robust place to start. Physical amenities now, has a robust place to start with what we accomplished this evening. Still more work to do. Um, housing is probably can easily put together a 2020 program because we're not going to do any building in 2020. It's too soon. We don't have time. So really what we're going to, what the housing group is going to do, I don't want to prejudge it, they're going to basically convene. They're going to convene developers. They're going to convene realtors to, to Jennifer Falvey's point. They're going to get people who understand. They're going to look at the housing study. They're going to do some economic analysis. Their budget request for 2020 is going to be really small. For 2021 and onwards, it may be really big. But my guess is in 2020, it'll be pretty small. And then that leaves the business, experience, business environment, supporting the business environment. And again, there, we already have some places to start, the storefront program. Um, and there'll be some other programs that get developed. So I think we can do this. I think between now and December, we can build four sets of plans. We come together as an EDC in December, reconcile the plans, divide up the money, make some tough choices. And those are the bulk of our spending, hopefully, is here. And we do that once a year. And we say, look, we're not doing any other, but it's above 10,000 or 5,000 or seven, whatever the number is. That's it. <laughs> Until next September when we start the planning process again. I'll also say that what I'm proposing here is for one year. It's just 2020. And we agree right now that in September, when we're about to start the cycle again, we stop and say, wait a minute, are we crazy? Did this, was this terrible? Was it good? Do we want to tweak it? 
So until next we, September. Next September. If we decide now to do this, it's a 15-month process, but we're going to start talking about, we're going to assess whether or not it worked starting next September or October, and then we'll either change it or keep it the same. So it's not cast in stone. John, yes. I, when would you hope to um, make the decision on what your priorities are for the next? For 2020. Yeah. For calendar 2020, we do that in December of this year. So we come to the now. We might take us this first time around. It might be January. Right. We might be a month late. But it'll be before town. We're intentionally trying to offset it from town meetings so that right. the town doesn't get overwhelmed with, you know, with too big. <laughs> but also, it helps the select will do their budget. Correct. So that's so we're going to shoot for the end of December. I, I hope we. I don't think it's the end of the world if it's the end of January, but we're going to shoot for December. So that's how we would handle this. Before, because we always end up spending the most amount of time on the things that, in the larger scheme of things, are less important. <laughs> but so let's just pause on that for a minute. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I see everyone. Most people nodding. We we need to and will define the level of detail that's needed to meet the December requirement for us to say, yes, we'll do that, number three, and the level of detail that's required for us to say, go spend that money that we budgeted to spend, the latter being more detailed than the former. Rod? So, so John, in December, yeah. you're anticipating and expecting these four working teams but to make a presentation about what they're working on, how much it's going to cost, right. and then go from there. Well, and then to the, to the EDC, to right. to, and the EDC, that, and those things are going to add up to more money than we have. Sure. And the EDC is going to decide what to do. Right. Collect. And then. And we'll get with public input. Okay. With input, it's our decision, but with public input. Okay. And and then what would be? Are you suggesting that? after we meet and we learn about what we've been working on as individual teams we make that presentation to the public like we did tonight yeah absolutely well the public would be at the meeting i mean however mechanically we do it but they might be at the meeting where we each present yes the but then we're like a, a bigger yeah correct another big wood yeah. pizza yeah well i don't know <laughs> there's people complaining in my household there's only two people in my household so you can figure out who that was <laughs> complaining that the food isn't very healthy and that Sally, you, you know, are serving great food at the picnic. Thank you very much. Anyway. So I, I just want to I just want to clarify one thing because I think that developing what I'll call project plans are really important for this segment. They're critical for this segment. They might be important in some lesser less sense lesser sense. They might be needed in some smaller ways for this, but they're really important for this. Roger has uh, offered a, a framework for. What a, pro what a detailed project plan might look like. We haven't gone over it yet. It's not, we won't do it tonight, but we'll have something at the next meeting to present. But I just want to lay out the concept that says there's probably two levels of planning for these, for these big projects. Remember, this is 10,000 or more in our priority areas. One is the level needed once a year to get approval from your peers <laughs> and the public. And the second is the level that says, OK, you can, you can spend the money which would not be the same thing. At, at, it, I mean, it, it could happen in December if you have an incredible plan. But I would imagine, for example, imagine Teagle's Landing. I can imagine that we might have a plan for Teagle's Landing that says, that's sort of like what we have now, which is probably not good enough to write a check, but is good enough to say, we know what it's going to cost, we know that, it's a, that we want to do it or not. And then what we would then do between December and February or March is go get three competitive bids, get the actual cost for the actual railing. Maybe we spend $5,000 to hire an architect to draw up the plans and we, you know, and then we, and, that, and that's the kind of the detailed uh, work plan or project plan. And we would then be able to use that to keep track of these major projects. And so monthly meetings might include updates on, you know, okay, Joe or, or Mika, Mike. Mika. Yeah. Mika. You know, I'm getting it right most of the time. The boys. 99% of the time. Mika, you know, you, you're overseeing, you know, this particular marketing project. Um, you said at, in March that you were going to be ready with these 25 commercials. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. You know, and we would sort of keep track of it that way. Does that, so this, this idea is a couple of things. Big projects in strategic areas, the scope of it, 
the frequency of it, and the notion that we're going to use project plans on an annual basis, and then more detailed plans to actually approve the expenditure. You know what I'm going to say. Um, a great plan that fits into the priorities that comes in in April and has to be funded by September. Right. I feel like we should have a way, if it's a two-thirds majority, that we say we waive our rule or our process or some way to right. be able to handle that. Oh, I see. Just, and I was going about to ask a similar question. What, what if you get a, what if we receive a grant request right. between September and December that we're not considering in our four working teams? Well, I think between September and December, we still have time potentially to, and it's more, it's even more problematic in this concept if we receive something in April. Yeah. If we receive it in October, maybe we have time to get it in for by yeah. December. I mean, it's, it's kind of like you have an extraordinary clause. Right. of some sort. That That's what you suggested. Right? Get to the point where the timing of it has to happen. And it has to be done. And you've got to weigh out whether... I know. I know. You know. <laughs> or, or, or an idea. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, it's an yeah. inside joke. Courtney, uh, like Irene. Like I, Irene is a yeah, good no. I, I, yeah. Look, this is, a, this is an experiment. This is a one-year experiment. I hope it will continue. Personally, I don't have a problem I would, I would make it a two-thirds vote, mm -hmm. um, and I would hope that we wouldn't do it because I feel like it's a slippery slope. Mm -hmm. But if two-thirds of the people didn't agree with that, then uh, I'd do it. So I, I think it's extraordinary, fun. catastrophic, something, some, some term like that. Or Too good. You either have the money in the budget or you don't have the money in the budget. If you're going to work off an annual budget, you've already committed the money. So having a having something emerge in the middle of the year, you're spending money you don't have. Well, no, 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 hold on. No, no, we, no, no, we would not do that. No, we, no. we would reallocate. The same thing that happens when the town doesn't have the money to cut the grass, you know, and the, or, or they, you know, this is real, right? I mean, you know, so they decide not to buy a truck. I mean, they don't, they don't spend money. No, we wouldn't spend money we don't have. We would reallocate. Now, and, well, and actually but, there is additional money in there over and above our annual Take at this point in time. I mean, we're not going to borrow. Yeah. We're not going to go into debt. Right. So, so, so I think just to keep as a practical matter to keep the suggestion that that we would that we would uh, uh, consider approaches during the course of the year only in extraordinary circumstances and it requires a two-thirds vote. Okay. Are people okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to put down extraordinary and two-thirds. Extraordinary and two-thirds. Okay. The next thing that we discussed were these small projects in so prayer. Less than the short and then you don't apply. <laughs> right. I mean, it's obviously yeah. it's our judgment. It's basically, yeah. if two thirds of us think that it's worth changing our rules, again, I, I, okay. Yeah. I think we all understand that. Yeah, yeah. What we're proposing here, and I think this proposal is very much tied, it was in our discussion, to what this line is, whether it's five or 10, or maybe you all think it should be some lower or higher number. There was some suggestion it should be lower than five. I think there was no suggestion it should be higher than 10. Mm -hmm. um, the idea here is that we would try to be more flexible than we are today, that we would not have a separate group to consider these, that we would do this every two months, We would do it every two months. It would be a two-step process. The proposal would be presented to the full EDC in person. The EDC would assign one person to be a thought partner and work with that grantee and come back at the next meeting with a proposal to be voted on. And if it was a priority area, obviously it would, the, the, and it would be the chair. I'd ask for we would ask for volunteers, and if it didn't happen, I would assign somebody to be the person. If it was in the priority area, it'd presumably be someone who was working on one of those working teams. If it was not in the priority area, it'd be anyone who's interested. And I mean, I'm willing to take on the ones that if no one wants to do them, or I'll we'll flip a coin so, or something like that. So, for example, would the storefront reimbursement fall in that realm? 
Well, the no, the reimbursement was, was our program. We we create generated that program. Yeah. So in that in that yeah, program, I mean. No, no. In that particular case, Joe, Sally, Sally administers that. Those, if a storefront, we establish the criteria. In that particular case, it's unusual. Okay. If a grantee requests that, and we have money remaining in the fund, yeah. Sally decides. They meet decide. all the criteria. Sorry? And they meet, and they meet the criteria. criteria. Sally evaluates them based on the criteria. We haven't had a trouble with that. She either, she tells us. But every December, every December we decide yeah. whether we're continuing that program. Correct. Right. Right. right in December, exactly. In December, exactly. we would that would be one of our greater than that was like a twenty-two thousand dollar, twenty thousand dollar pool. I think yeah. we spent maybe eight or something, but that would because it was a pool that would that go through this process. Mm -hmm. And but but that's probably the only one that I can think of that we're that's the only one I can think where of, we would I, administer it that yeah. way. So, so, so uh, the, the on your um, schematic there, yeah. the five to ten thousand dollar ones. Would also go into the annual budget if they were things that we knew in advance. They did, they yeah, no. I mean, if there was something, you know, like if one like of these big, if one of these ideas was cheap, we we could certainly we could certainly get it. Yeah, 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 of course. Because I think one of the things we should be asking in what, those that are out of time is why didn't you? What give us a good reason you didn't give us the uh, uh, the budget request in. in between September in and December. December, whether it's a five thousand, right? No, we, we would we would have a public call for these now. Yeah. It's right. now September. We basically so we should basically issue a call in our four priority areas. Please submit small grant, small or big grants, right. <laughs> in our four priority areas. We'd like to hear from you. It's a great great point. So we want to have so we have a public call. Yeah. John, are you bypassing this, the uh, working groups then for the, for the smaller grants? Is it going to be a one on one? Well, no, no, it's, it, it would be a member, a person in the working group would, if, there's only working groups here. So here it would be a person in the working group. If more than one person wanted to do it, fine. I mean, that, that wouldn't be. I'm trying to balance workload and efficiency and so forth. Does that work? Do, would you look okay, okay with that? So two months, the second month they come back with the partner person and present to the full EDC. We vote on it. and. What should the limit be? That, and, and, yeah, we, we talked about having a third category in the middle, and it's like we're a tiny little bureaucracy with not a lot of money. So I think we should just have two. So, um, so one person is the partner to the grantee. OK, what should the limit, what should the line be between the bottom process and the top process? Really, the question becomes, when is the money, in my opinion, when does the money get big enough that we need to demand of either ourselves or the grantees that they have a, a work plan, a project plan, that's of the level of rigor that's going to ensure that the project gets implemented and we can hold people accountable and that it's taxpayers' money well spent. Is that? Yeah. I put, my personal feeling is $10,000 should be kicked up into the upper group. But, but below $10,000, you are okay with this? Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking at um, the grants that were, that have been awarded there's quite a few of them that are under $5,000. Mm -hmm. Right. Could you not list those? Pardon? Could you list, list just the really quickly the names of them? Well, or just a, a couple. A couple. I mean. A couple what? Two well, names. it's things like the, the Back to the Maple Madness, the Buff Island Music, the Lobster Fest, Welcome Signs, um, the Communications. Yeah. Bookstock. Yeah. Pop Up Co working. Those are older ones going back the other way. Yeah. Um, the fireworks, Sunday jazz, the municipal planning grant was just a, a thing, but I guess most of the earlier ones, were, the more later ones were more than that, but then they were significantly more. So there aren't a lot between five and 10,000, right. what I'm seeing. So you're saying it doesn't much matter whether we pick five or 10? Well. It's kind of, I mean, it matters a little bit, but not as much as right. I'm, I may be making right. it out right. to be. Okay, let's just go down and sort of say what you think the number should be. Uh, I would go with 10,000. Joe? Five. Ten, five. 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 Ten. Five. Okay, sorry. Raise your hand if you said ten. <laughs> <laughs> Raise your hand if you said five. Okay. Ten wins. No, no, that's four to three. Ten wins. You got a lawyer. No, 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 no. You got a lawyer. I'm going to vote for five. I got a lawyer on my side. Five wins. I'm going to vote for five. Okay. <laughs> sorry, I couldn't. Okay. Um, can I ask you to clarify? Yeah. Okay, so the grants that you're talking about, are they 
public grants like you've made to the chamber, or where would Teagle's Landing fall? Is is we're not, this applies to either of those. We're, we're no longer, the, the, the change here is, that, is to say, we're gonna hold, we're gonna, we're gonna do the same process, whether, we're gonna hold, basically we're gonna hold ourselves to the same standards that we're holding the grantees to, and vice versa. So it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter that Teagle's Landing, you, you know, whether the person who came up with the idea was sitting on the committee, and then whether the person who did the work to develop it was on the committee, and whether the person who's going and investigating the architects is on the committee. It's a question of whether the project is big or not, and whether it fits into our priority areas. If it, if it meets okay. those criteria, we're gonna have two levels of planning, an annual plan where we approve it, and a detailed plan before we write a check. That, that, so it's, it, that's, the sh that's the shift. How, it, it doesn't yeah, matter where it comes from. Yeah, how the accounting? process. You know, what I'm getting at is if we get four, you know, requests for five thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars. No, no, but but it's so you know, where does that come from? Would it come? Oh no, no sorry. So in the budget, budget so in the budget, we're going to set a budget. One of the things we'll do in December is we'll set a budget for this row. Okay. Right, and and okay. I, we've talked about that in the past. So Mary okay. Riley suggested it would be fifteen thousand, uh, fifteen percent, so forty-five thousand. And what this two, every two months process is going to lead to, other than the, call, the public call for projects, is going to lead to a first come, first serve uh, approach. Sure. Because the pot dwindles. The pot is, the, and we're not going to, yeah, and, I sure. mean, I, you know, we can always vote to rescind our own rules. It's our rules, but I'm going to fight very hard that if we say it's $45,000, that the, the $46,000 we say come back and okay. come back in December or January. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you know most of us want to do that. Of course, we don't know what's going to come in, but okay. So I think does this cover for the four of us that were there yesterday? Does this cover the the key question? We we answered that one question. Um, is there any? Uh, so what this would mean as a practical matter is is that what we would now do is break up into teams. Um, sorry, there's one one other thing that we talked about, which is time commitment. The, the, and that, take the physical amenities committee as a perfect example. There's work at three levels. There's the EDC, which is looking at physical amenities in total. It's, it, we want to, we want to allocate money to it in December. We want to, you know, we want to make sure, we want to approve expenditures throughout the year when the program project plans are, the detailed project plans are submitted, and we want to track that progress and the outcomes throughout the year. That's the EDC level. I think we all need to commit to participate fully in that, and anyone new, you know, who is worried about time commitments needs to commit to that. That's once a month, and that's what, what the role of the full EDC would be. Then there's a second level, which is, which is working on one of these projects one or more of these projects. And the reason why I, I, I would rather than call it a subcommittee, I'd rather call it working teams, is that, you know, Julia might have time to, or Beth, there's a good example, Beth might have time to work on the info booth because she's actually, her organization is particularly connected to that. <laughs> but she might not to work, want to work on the other four. Fine. And the same thing might be true for any of us on the committee. And so what that allows us to do is to, it allows committee members to spend as much or as little time on the working teams as nest as possible, and it allows them to target your work in areas of interest. So for example, you could be, Beth, you could be, in, or you know, uh, Julia, you could be interested in the editorial board and um, the info booth. So you'd, be, you'd go to the, those meetings quarterly, I guess. And then you'd participate whenever this working group had to meet. And so it gives us a little bit more flexibility. It still keeps us focused on the four priorities. One of the things we're trying to achieve by this is, again, we've discussed this, I, want to, I think I can say probably with Julia and, and Mika. Julia raised the issue of younger people, and Mika has also raised questions about time commitment. And you're not the only two people among this group that has raised those issues. Mm -hmm and trying to figure out how can we encourage younger people to participate. Julia has talked to a number of them and they're worried about the time commitment. On the other hand, we don't want to reduce the amount of time that we have to commit to this because there's a lot of work to get done. 
That's right. So this is really a flexible approach that allows people according to their means to, you know, to participate. And obviously we're going to need community involvement to get all this work done. And we have it in marketing. We have it on the, on the revitalization committee and we'll have it on the other committees. The housing committee for sure, to Jennifer's point, of course we're going to get realtors involved. You know, we, we need to. So, so does that concept of working teams make sense? Yeah. That's, what, that's what would support this, and that's what would support you know, the, the people who might you know, help, help on these. And then all of us will pitch in for hopefully there won't be too many. John, I think, I think it's great, but I, I think the, your point about um, a commitment that's going to be required, that I have to think it through and say, you know, there's a lot of things I want to do, but some things I just can't. So, you know, can I do this? And can I, can I really get involved and... and, and do the job that's going to be required. I think that's the question people have to ask themselves before they even decide they want to jump Well, and I think the minimum, and Jill, maybe you can just briefly comment on this, you're about to, my understanding is you haven't yet actually, but you're about to require that all commissions in town, that people attend 80% of the, of the required meetings. Is that in the offing? Or? I, we've already approved it. I thought it was already agreed. Oh, I, I, I was told that it wasn't implemented. Oh, okay. Yes, it was approved and agreed. It hasn't been approved and agreed. It, I don't know. I, that may be wrong. But anyway, the point is, it's coming, and it's perfectly yeah, reasonable it's policy. Good. And I think that would apply to the that would apply to, to the, the working teams also. No, no, no. I think it would apply to the. Well, yeah, it would apply to the working teams, but people don't have to be on the working teams. That's right. Right. That's right. So you That's can, right. You, you know, you exactly can, right. Exactly right. <laughs> it's pretty hard to. I mean, we came to eighty percent because it's pretty hard to run meetings and a group if people don't turn up to eighty percent of the meetings. Yeah. And telephone attendance is fine. There's no pushback on the eight percent. I was just clarifying. No, that. but he was asking about the subgroups. It'd be hard to yeah. even do a subgroup. Yeah. No, no. That's why I'm saying that that, that these that these working teams um, are you'd only join them. The, the, the commitment we we require of everybody to be on the full EDC is eighty percent of the monthly meetings. Right. And then volunteer for whatever additional meetings you feel you have the interest for and the time to do. And there's no pejor You know, you can still be a very effective EDC member if you're not doing the detailed planning on the info booth. Because you're making the strategic, you know, we're, we're doing what we do now, largely. Sure. Okay, so this, so this is at this level, this, this is how far I wanted to get to today. Well, I think this lays out for us then what we need to do between now and December if we operate this way, is we have to create, we have to, we have to put out a call for proposals in our um, priority area. I would argue, I would like to argue that despite the fact that we had September grants, I would like to push all of the grant requests to, to, to a December decision now. And basically put out a call, explain this process, tell people that, you know, that we would like to have the requests in by the 1st of November so that we can build them. I don't know if is that a good time. Now we have one cycle, to, one cycle that flows into this 2020 plan, not two, is what I'm saying. So whenever that is. Well, I mean, think about when you want to present it at the, which meeting? If you want to present at the November meeting, then you should have your grant applications due at least a week ahead of this. Yeah, this, right, right, right. Okay. Some sort of process. You can't just get them that day. Okay. So how about, would, would the group be okay if Sally and I work out that schedule so that, so that we end up in December being able to consider these? I might just suggest that December is, for most people, one of the busiest times of the year. Right. And so to, you know, and I'm assuming that if we're talking about possibly reviewing lots of requests in one Yeah, it's going to be a long, the December meeting is a long meeting. It's a long meeting, and rightfully so. Maybe December should be January. Okay. Um, just an idea. I, I, well, I already said that we might... Fine. Let's, uh, after this meeting, I'll poll people. The December, the, the big meeting, the big annual meeting is going to be a long meeting. It's fine with me if it's January 10th. Yeah. Ish. You know, I mean, it's I, not I January. I warn, though, that scrambling right after the holidays, too. Not yeah, right. Yeah. Stuff. Whenever I do anything right after that, it's like nobody's ready to go. Yeah. Would it be effective? Yeah. I mean, first, the first step would be to see who's in town, who's yeah, like right. travel. So we should send out a doodle with all of the different right, dates right, 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 right. of our meetings and just right. see where people yeah. are at, at from where we stand now. Right. Okay, if, if the group is willing to delegate to me and Sally the scheduling of this, yeah. if the strategic intent is it, we, we are willing to delay, I would say even to the end of January, because we can give the select board an update 
as to what it's looking like before, you know, we can give an informal update well, in December. Well, we put our budget, we put our budget to bed for the non-calendar year, um, probably at the end of January, I think. So if you miss that, then um, we would, no, we would no, have no, to we, have informal. Okay, no, no, I think we, 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 we could, fine. So we'll, I think we could meet that deadline. You might have to have a special, a special meeting or, because you meet the second. We have dates that we have to, by. Right. So maybe right. so every other year it could be November, and then this year we have to do what? Okay. So so we'll, fine. So we'll we'll basically st the objective is to meet the select board object calendar to to not bunch it up with the holidays if if possible, um, and and to find out when people are available for a longer meeting. It's probably a three or four hour meeting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one the one annual meeting that we'd have. And if you just let and then and then do we agree that there'll be one? that the grants that we request now will be for that cycle and that Sally and I yeah. will pick the timing and the deadlines in order to feed into that cycle. Yeah. Okay? John? It seems to me that we really need to have an ag aggressive uh, communication with the public. I agree. Because now we're saying that if you have a request that's uh, over $5,000, your, your SOL until next September if you don't get it in, in this in the next three months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, no, Which I agree. Is, but that's going to surprise a lot of people yeah. who are used to the other way of doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would add, being on the subcommittee that has assessed these grants, that this past cycle is the first cycle that we have gotten a good number of grants in. Um, we, for many, about, at, we at all, 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 all over the place. All yeah. over but relatively high. The, the cycle that you were a participant in. Right. Um, in previous grant cycles, we've had two oh, applications. Really? Yeah. So yeah. it's not, so, so this is, it will be interesting. I don't feel comfortable saying that that trend won't continue, that people aren't finding out more about us and the money and speaking up and that, whatever. But I also don't feel comfortable saying we should expect eight grant proposals at every. Well, I think we can, we can address either situation if we communicate aggressively now. Yeah. So let's try to do that. I'll seek your input on it. I'll work on that. I mean, I think we can, I think we, we, we should explain what we've just discussed, the rationale for it. Fundamentally, what this is being driven by is not trying to limit dollar amounts. It's trying to create project plans for big projects. The, the, the focus is to get the project plans, not to limit the grants. <laughs> you know, so, okay. Any, any last comments about this? I just have one question, yeah. and I realize this is probably more of a theological question, but I mean, this whole schema makes a lot of sense, but your fourth box, where it's Which? low low cost, not in any priority. Right. Why have it? I mean, if somebody cannot write a proposal creatively enough that it falls into <laughs> one of your categories, <laughs> they shouldn't be funded anyway. <laughs> <laughs> then otherwise it's just a slush fund. <laughs> Roger, yeah. we've gotten some pretty some applications that are not very creatively written, and, but that are decent ideas. I would just. I, I mean, I would argue grant well, that, that some of them are that not one of the works of art. One of the roles that EDC could take on is saying, "Let us help oh. you put this oh. into yeah. the right bucket." Oh. But otherwise, it's just there's this pot of money that you can just dip into. Well, just to be clear, the pot is going to the, the pot that we're going to set aside is going to be for both. And right. So we're no, going to we're going to basically, I presume, we're going to tell everybody here, say, look, you, your chances of getting approved are much better if you're here. I mean, okay, you, yeah, you know, just, but yes, I, there's also a little bit of how much change we th we can digest, but more importantly, that we think the community can. No, digest. that's a good point. And so that's I think that this is a one-year plan, and I would ex very much expect. Uh, well, let me put it this way: I can guarantee that someone on this committee is going to bring this point up next September, <laughs> since that person has already brought it up this time and has no, decided that minimizing the impact of changes yeah. is a good a good model. Okay, I agree. Allison, John, sorry for being late. Um, your priorities. You uh, have you identified and articulated those already tonight? What your priorities I are for the year? Very quickly, we identified them in 2016. We're not changing. Them. Okay, so they're, they marketing. are as they are. I'll just tell you what they are: marketing, which right. um, expanding housing. Right, they're the four that are here. Right. Yeah. Okay. No, no. I was just curious if they were changing along no. with this schema. They're not. They're, they're, they were literally taken from the, the minutes of the meeting, and I reworded them very slightly, but not but not substantive. Okay. Thanks. 
Fantastic. So I'll write this up and, and we'll, and the next step is I'm gonna seek out from each of you over the next three months, who would like to work on, if you have time, who would like to work on developing plans in these four areas? Because so basically we have now a project between now and December to build plans. In parallel with that, we'll, we'll, we'll get submissions and that will be woven into those plans. So would you, would, are you saying then at this moment, tomorrow or next week, I should wait before I get together with the people I've been working with? If you're already focused on this, you can just go ahead. Yeah, just yeah. go ahead. I think that's fine. Okay. But I'll, so, I mean, I've asked each of you. I don't have the thing. I don't want to put you right on the spot. Also, yeah. the, the nature of your participation has shifted a little bit. So I'll go out and re-query each of you as to what you would like to do. As long as you're, in my view, I'd like you to do as much as you possibly can, but not any more than you can. <laughs> And everyone who's participating at the full EDC level is meeting their civic obligation fully. So anything more than you can do would be great. And then we'll reach out to the community to expand the number of people that are working on this where needed. I mean, the marketing committee, for example, may just say, we're going to keep meeting quarterly. We're going to keep doing what we're doing. And we're going to put together, we'll put it into your format, EDC. <laughs> but we're just going to do it exactly the same way. Or you may decide to change. It's up to you. The other, the other you know, revitals. So, okay. All right. Do we need to make a motion for this? Uh, uh, I suppose it might, it's not, it might not be specific enough. It's not, it's not particularly clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you can put it together for next week. Really kind of pull it together, yeah. Well, also, I don't know that we, I mean, this is really talking about, um, you know, uh, how we work rather than the things yeah. we are deciding. Okay. So I, I would, right. I would okay. say we but don't. Uh, isn't it that you would have to, to publicize the deadline for the grants? Doesn't that have to be a motion? They're really changing the way you fund. Uh, In other words, you're not taking grants. Well, that's probably true. I mean, maybe we should have it. But it doesn't have to be done now, but I think at some point when you formalize the process. You well, we're going to have to announce it before our next meeting. We're going to have to announce it right away. Um, uh, I don't think I well, quite so understand Could, could we it. just do a motion? That you've delegated to us the determination of the, the grant schedule. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, I think it's the last meeting, and to communicate that new schedule yeah, to the public. To the public. To so okay, fine. So well, let me try this motion, Sally. I would move that we. Am I allowed to make a motion? Yeah. Sure. Chair? Okay. I, I would move that we that the EDC delegate to you and I the scheduling of the grant deadlines for the next grant cycle that would meet the following criteria: one, that we meet the select board's need for information. Two, that we are able to practically schedule our big end of year meeting. And three, that we receive information from the public, from the grantees in sufficient time to evaluate their grants for our process, mm -hmm. for our annual process. And that we then communicate that as soon as, as, soon as it's determined to the public. Sorry, I think it's fair. Okay. Is any discussion? Second. Is there a motion? Oh, you second. Okay. Uh, motion's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion passes. Okay. Good. Just very quickly, two, uh, two things of new business. One is um, it was suggested a long time ago, and I would propose that in October we hold our meeting in South Woodstock, mm -hmm. and then we promote that. It's in the firehouse, is that right? We think that there's a place for it. We haven't reserved it yet. That's where they do public meetings. Okay, I just think it's as a, you know, and we should promote it. What is that? It's the only public building. Okay, well, there we go. Uh, does anyone have a problem logistically? Okay, from seven to nine. Um, secondly, um, uh, sorry, uh, the, the I misspoke, Sally, when I said visit with Governor Scott. I should have said visit to Montpelier. Oh, sorry, this is visit. Sorry, this is the item. When Governor Scott came to Woodstock, he brought with him his economic development commissioner. I'm sorry, maybe Allison probably knows. Charlie knows all these folks. John Goldstein. Who was, who was it? John Goldstein. She's the new one. Is, no, she's oh. been our commissioner of economic oh. development for quite a while. Okay. Well, maybe it's not. Then it's Ted Brady. Yeah, it must be Ted. That is our deputy secretary of the Agency of Commerce and Community Development. Oh, okay. And who's the? Well, any, who, Michael Sherling. That's Michael was, Sherling. Was he has yeah. just left? Right. Okay. And now Lindsay Curley is the new secretary of the Agency. Of Commerce. Okay. What's Brett's job? So thank you. So Michael came and described 
what the agency is doing. And there were a number of striking similarities to what we're doing. It's just writ large. You know, like they're trying to get young people to move in. I mean, it's all this stuff. And they're measuring, trying to connect their website, social media stuff with that. People who actually visit the state because they can track where their phones are and they have all this great stuff. I said, gee, could we come, we the EDC, come to Montpelier, could you just tell us what you're doing because maybe we can borrow some of it. They said, great. And they've now offered up a date, which is October 16th. And the, it's like a little EDC field trip. And basically, for any of you who would like to come, and we may be, there may be capacity to invite a few members of the public okay, also. Is that, no? I'll, I'll get you the information. I just wanted to explain it. I'll send it out. And I should have done it it's today. The of the week. It's a Wednesday. It's, yeah. what? it's a Wednesday. And it would be something like from 9 to 12, or something like that. So we drive to Montpelier, do that. We could have a lunch together as a group and come back if we wanted. And we basically, she will, he committed that she will arrange, or they, they no, she's. Well, Joan should really run it. Yeah, no, 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 she's now committed. They, they waited, I think, until she came on board, because they just told me a few days ago. Right, but I stick with Joan Goldstein, who will, as Commissioner of Economic Development, who will oversee oh, oh. everything for you. Okay, got it. So, sorry, Joan's not the secretary, Joan's the commissioner. Got it. So deal with Joan. Okay, perfect. So I'll, I'll coordinate that with you. So the idea is we'd probably meet with three subcommittees or three different groups that are working. Them. There's a marketing group. There's a, I mean, you might know better than I do. But we meet with whoever is relevant to meet with. And if any of you would like, you know, to come, I mean, I'll go and, and we'll, so we can have a little talk. So I think it'll be, it'll be interesting to, to see what we can learn. So there may be some, at minimum, there's some well, marketing. Well, and you might come out. back when the legislature's in session when we actually create those ideas that they're working on. Okay. Well, absolutely. What are your well, let's just start with, we'll start with economic, economic development. development. Oh, sorry, I'm not trying to. No, no, no. It's we work in tandem, but right. there's a two piece to the process. Right, right, right. Because the remote worker idea, the attracting right, right. people well, to the important piece, I understand. But yeah, the that's piece, where it all happens. Okay, that was. I just wanted to make you aware that I'll send you all out the date. And I mean, is anyone opposed to this? Even if you can't come, I presume you're fine with other people. But okay. Joan is a great person because Joan, as you may remember, was the executive director of the Green Mountain Economic Development, development Corporation, which is our area, uh, you know, economic development corporation. So she lives in South Wales and she's been on the select board there. She is very uh, hip Joan to Goldstein. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, and I'll work with you, Allison, and with Charlie. Okay, that's it. Is there any other business? Okay. Do we need a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Great meeting, John. Great.